3D printing is impressive technology. Machines that can literally print almost any object you could imagine, from a wide range of materials, practically instantly on demand. And its potential is vast. 3D printing, conceptually fairly straightforward. You have a machine which plugs into a computer and it allows you, instead of printing on flat sheets of paper, uh, to print out three-dimensional objects, usually made out of plastic. When 3D printers first arrived, they, they were dubbed the Santa Claus machine by people uh, who, who first came across them because it just seemed utterly magical that you could design something in 3D on a computer and then have it come out of a machine as if by magic. The technology has been around for some time, but has maintained a low profile until recently, not least because of the colossal price tag attached to early devices, typically around $70,000. But prices are dropping rapidly. Over the past decade, companies like Hewlett Packard have developed the technology behind what they call their officeable printer, the Design Jet 3D. At a commercial level, um, 3D printing alone represents about two to three hundred million uh, dollars in revenues each year, uh, and it's something that's growing. So we would expect the market to grow all the way up to a billion within the next five to ten years. Although it's still not cheap, if you coughed up about eighteen thousand dollars, you could walk home with something approaching a desktop factory. In time, it's hoped that this technology could trigger the start of a manufacturing revolution, one led by a mouse click rather than a monkey wrench. This wrench was printed just as it is. So this wasn't printed in three pieces and then assembled. You can see there's three different pieces. This is a fully functioning wrench. It's made out of plastic, so you probably wouldn't be able to do very much with it. But as a prototype, it's fantastic. In the London office of Foster & Partners, they've been using 3D printing and rapid prototyping for some six years in their architectural models. Despite lacking some of the finer detail and durability of their traditionally handmade cousins, sketch models produced using 3D printing techniques are much quicker and cheaper to manufacture. Although we thought it was going to be kind of quite a niche uh, thing within the office, I think nowadays almost every project in the office uses uh, rapid prototyping or 3D printing. We've become obviously more experienced with really pushing it to its limits and uh, we've, we can produce some really complex parts, quite fragile parts that um, actually some of the, even the manufacturers are quite uh, are blown away with in terms of the, uh, the, the level of detail that we're able to create with these. These sorts of machines are far beyond the price range of most homes and offices. But at the University of Bath, researchers are working on the third generation of a desktop printer that can even reproduce many of its own parts. It's called the Replicating Rapid Prototyper, or RepRap. One of the reasons why they were so expensive is because all the technologies were patented. And as a consequence, everybody had a monopoly on their particular technology. The manufacturers used the same strategy as the manufacturers of inkjet printers, uh, namely the inkjet printer manufacturers more or less give you a printer and then sell you ink. Uh, the 3D printing manufacturers don't give you a printer, they sell you the printer, but then they sell you the plastic. The RepRap, on the other hand, is entirely open source, meaning the plans for the machine are distributed freely. Add to that the fact that it can run off a solar-powered car battery, and you have a remarkably flexible piece of technology. There we go, one coat hook, made in the machine, uh, made out of polylactic acid, uh, which is the plastic that we use from preference. Polylactic acid is a plastic that's made from uh, starch, and uh, starch, of course, comes from plants. So uh, anybody who can grow a small plant crop on a few tens of square meters of land can make their own supply of plastic to put in the machine. So you can be almost completely independent. And with cheap 3D printers becoming more accessible, patent holders are on edge. The ability to copy a design and reproduce it at home is a real possibility, one that has clear implications for industry. Commercial 3D printers will give you a lot better quality and they'll have a lot better reliability as well, but um, the, the MakerBot will give you something which looks 90% as good as a commercial 3D printer for 10% of the price. It's fascinating but also slightly worrying that it might replace Lego. Isn't it the idea that children did design things on their computer and out they come, rather than you know, the, the tangible effect of picking up pieces and building things and realising how strong they are, how weak they are. Although we're a long way off printing out something as advanced as a mobile phone just yet, researchers aren't short of ideas of where to look next. What I can see it is, you know, you could go down the street to your copy shop and, and have a part made there that you've sent, you know, maybe you sent the part the night before and, and you go down and it's ready the next day and you go in and pick it up. We're doing some research together with the Loughborough University 
and we look at the concept of 3D printing, mainly layered manufacturing, you know, building something up layer by layer and uh, taking that to a building scale. So we're looking if we can actually print with concrete. So we've been developing their uh, 3D printer, but actually prints concrete and pretty large pieces about two meter high. And if that works, this technology could not only revolutionize manufacturing, but the entire construction industry as well.